just made my first cold brew coffee. I'm not seeing myself going back to regular, regular warm coffee. This is really, really good. Uh, as much as I'd like to, we're not going to discuss coffee today. We're going to talk about this bad boy. What this is, is an Ardu boy. It's basically an Arduino. Uh, it's got what I imagine. It's an OLED screen. I think it's OLED. I, mean, I could be. I could be so wrong. Anyway, it comes with a screen. And it basically looks like a small Game Boy or something. I guess that's where it got its name. What this is, 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 is like an open source Arduino compatible tiny Game Boy. Uh, using the regular Arduino IDE, you can, you can make your own games. The people behind this uh, also made a framework that we, the consumers or the, the game developers can use. It contains like a lot of, a lot of stuff that you'd need uh, when making games. Like for example, a convenient API to work with the screen, uh, update pixels, those sort of things. Inside of the enclosure you'll find an Arduino compatible microcontroller kind of running the show, a built-in battery that you can charge with USB, and a 128 by 64 OLED screen. On the top you'll have a power switch that you can turn the device on or off with, and as for game input you have a directional pad uh, and AB buttons. This won't be a build video, obviously, but I figured I will, I will kind of show you how it works, how you can develop games, how you can download games to it and, and, and run it. I guess this is like a hands-on video, first impressions, but not really the first impressions since I've I worked with this a little bit. Um, but maybe it's first impressions for you and I will walk you through kind of how uh, you can create your... I will try to walk you through how you can create your own games. I'll show you the um, development environment and kind of the frameworks. And I recently made like a super simple a breakout clone for uh, the Art Boys. So I figured we will we'll create that game together so you can get a, a sense of kind of how it's like to develop for the Art Boy. Just so that we're on the same page what we're building before we actually begin, this is Breakout, a game released back in the 70s. You as the player controls the paddle in the bottom of the screen and your objective is to bounce um, the moving ball with a paddle to break the blocks on top of the screen kind of without letting the ball move past the paddle. And you repeat this until all blocks are destroyed. Uh, but let's jump into the computer and we'll kind of have a look at the environment and we will uh, see how you can create this breakout clone for the Auto Boy using the Arduino IDE. We have fired up uh, Arduino IDE and then, and then we have the game breakout to, to the left here, some Google image search so that we can kind of get some inspiration maybe. Anyway, what we're going to focus on is of course the code over here to the right. Um, and what I have here is basically the boilerplate code for I, almost, I guess, any uh, Ardu Boy project. If we run this now and we'll upload it to the Ardu Boy, here we go, yeah, so a black screen but we're ready to kind of fill the screen now with our uh, game logic. So the first thing that we're going to do in the game now is to create the paddle, the player controlled paddle uh, down at the bottom. We'll create a, a variable that is going to hold the paddles width and we'll also have a variable holding the position of the paddle. In the setup we can just uh, make sure that we center the paddle on the screen width being the, the width of the screen, we divide that by two, we subtract paddle width divided by two, and we we should have the paddle in the center. We'll create a function called render paddle, and whenever we call that, we'll draw the paddle on the screen. Uh, so using the Ardu Boy's amazing uh, framework here uh, and helper functions, we can, for example, draw a rectangle on the screen. So we'll use the fill rect function. And then if we just call this render paddle from uh, the loop function and we run this, and there we go, that's the paddle. So what we'll do now is to implement some logic to move the uh, paddle when we press the left or right arrow key. And in order to do that, we'll create a new function that we call handle game input. 
again, we're using the Artiboy's frameworks to, che to check if a certain key is pressed or a certain button is pressed. So if we pass in left button here, we can see if the left button is currently pressed on the, on the, on the Artiboy. If it is pressed, we're gonna subtract 2.5 from the X position. And to make sure that we don't uh, kind of fall off screen, we're gonna just check if paddle X uh, is less than zero, then we're just gonna place it back on, on zero. Otherwise, if we're pressing down the uh, uh, right button, we wanna move to the right, so we'll add 2.5 to the X position. And then let's just call this function from our loop and build. And as you see, we can move the player's paddle with the arrow buttons. So the next thing that we would like to do is to create the blocks. We'll create a blocks calls. This is how many columns of blocks do we want? So for example, seven. Uh, we'll also define blocks row. So we'll have five rows of blocks and we'll have seven columns of blocks. Block width is say 15 pixels. Block height. In order to represent kind of what our map will look like, I'm gonna be using uh, integers and I'll do some bitwise operations. If you're not familiar with bitwise operations, I made, uh, well, some sort of summary or explanation in a previous video. I will, I will link it somewhere. We'll create a variable that we call level. So this will be uh, our level data. And then we create a function to render these blocks onto the screen. Uh, we'll create two for loops here. First we'll iterate over the uh, uh, rows and inside we'll iterate over each and every uh, column here. Uh, we'll do some, some bitwise operations here to see if uh, a particular bit is set in the integer. Uh, and if it is, we'll draw our boy fill rect. Let's remember calling this from the loop. Let's have renderings down here. If we run this now, we should be seeing uh, blocks about the panel. And we do. So let's talk about the ball for a little bit. It will start out with the, the ball being kind of attached to the paddle. We'll call that idle. So whenever the ball is idle, it moves along with the player's paddle. Just, it sits on top. Whenever the player presses uh, the A button on the art boy, we'll kind of launch the ball if it's in the this idle state. We're gonna need a couple of new variables to kind of work with the ball here. We'll have a, a X position for the ball. We'll have a Y position for the ball. We'll have a velocity, both a an X and a Y velocity. Uh, so basically the speed of the ball. And we need a Boolean to see if the uh, ball is idle. If the ball is idle, uh, we'll set the ball's X position to be paddle X plus paddle width divided by two. 56, I don't know, if it's a few pixels from the bottom. And if the player presses the A button and our ball is idle, we want to kind of launch the ball. So we set idle ball to false. We'll set the ball velocity y to minus one, ball velocity x to a random value so that kind of every time you, you press the A button, it will kind of go in, in, a, in a new direction. Let's create a function for rendering the ball. Uh, and this time we'll use the fill circle function and then let's call the function render ball So we're rendering the ball and the ball is moving along uh, the uh, player's paddle If we press a now the ball is no longer idle, so it won't follow the player uh, It's got a velocity, but we need to kind of move the ball as well So let's implement the logic for actually moving the ball. Let's create a new function called move ball and just so that we don't forget, let's add it here. Move ball. For every loop, we will just move the ball based off the velocity of the ball, right? Ball, bell, y. If we run this now and, and we press the A button, the ball will just disappear. So we need to implement some collisions so that the ball, whenever it hits kind of the side of the screen, it will bounce. X is less than, less or equal to zero. Um, 
will just invert kind of the, the ball's x velocity, so it will, it will bounce off of the wall. If the ball is uh, instead to the right of the screen, so it's kind of it's about to fall off of the right, uh, we'll do the same thing here and we'll invert the x velocity. If the ball y is less or equal to zero, we're going to invert instead the uh, y velocity. Otherwise, if we're if we're about to kind of jump off the bottom, uh, we'll set the ball to be idle again. Uh, it won't bounce on the player's paddle and it won't bounce on the blocks, but it will it will kind of stay within the limits. Last thing before we kind of finish up and we have this proof of concept is to detect the collisions of the blocks and the paddle. We'll start with the paddle and is the ball within the, the, the kind of the paddles width. Then we want to invert the uh, y velocity and uh, in order to kind of make it bounce in, in, in certain directions based on where it hits the paddle, we're going to use some math that I can't really explain, found it on the internet. The last thing to do now is to implement the collision with the blocks and if we detect a collision we're gonna uh, flip the velocity of the, the ball uh, so that it kind of bounces and we're gonna destroy that block. In order to do this, we're just gonna force our way here um, and we're just gonna iterate through all the blocks and see whatever it hits. If level y shift uh, x and one equals one. So if we have a, a live block here, we'll create a value, a, a rect value here so we can we can use the nice API that the Ardeboy provides us. So there we have a rectangle basically. And we're gonna create one for the ball as well. If our boy collide, block rect and ball rect. So if we detect a collision here, and if we collide, we wanna set the bit here on the level. We wanna, we wanna kind of set it to zero. But and we'll invert the uh, y velocity and that should be it. Let's run it and we should have a fully functional game or at least a proof of concept for a game. If you're not interested in, in kind of making games yourself, you can of course download and there's a whole bunch of games already uh, made by others. If you go to the Arduino.com website, you'll find a bunch of games. You download the source code, put it in the Arduino ID, uh, and then just hit upload um, and you can play the, play the game. I hope this video was somewhat informative and I highly suggest you go pick up an order boy and try it for yourself. A great way of kind of learning is to download other people's source code, look it through, modify, see how things work. And from that you can you can kind of learn to make your own games. Cool.